Prime Minister, you you talked about the establishment of a Caribbean energy thematic fund. Perhaps you'd want to give us some background to the fundamentals of, of it. The, the idea or the rationale behind our call for this Caribbean energy thematic fund is that it would be such that the CARICOM nations can draw down from that fund with respect to changing, transforming the energy matrix, transforming um, the structuring of, of energy in the CARICOM, given the uh, shortfall, the oil prices, gas prices, won, but also on the whole issues of all the issues relating to climate change. Now, to call as island states, we are very vulnerable to uh, sea level rise and so on. And then, of course, our whole economic development is very vital. So um, this fund would be such that they could draw down uh, to be used for uh, projects for renewable energy, alternative energy projects. Um, I had also proposed in it that in changing the energy matrix, there were really three things that we needed to look at. One had to do with preservation and conservation and efficiency. Um, that's very important because no matter what kind of energy we are using, we could still be in the difficulty that it is not efficiently, it is it's not being used efficiently and it's not being preserved in the manner that it should. Right now there's a lot of wastage in energy. Uh, very simple examples but more details can be given another time. So that's one aspect. And the second aspect was the whole idea of moving into renewable and alternative energy. Um, so the fund would be one to be used for projects in that regard and to be used by the other um, nation states in the CARICOM. Um, Trinidad and Tobago, in cooperation with other uh, agencies, uh, would, would, would work together. And I'm very gratified that President Biden, um, His Excellency Vice President Biden, has indicated that uh, they are interested in a fund being established um, for a coordinated mechanism which uh, that would involve the IDB, the CDB, the World Bank. And in fact, that was exactly what I had, had proposed, that there should be um, a coordinating uh, body to bring all these institutions together, that will, um, monies will be put into, put into the fund, coming not just from uh, those institutions, but also from other donor agencies, and of course, also from the private sector. So these were some of the, 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 the thoughts and say behind driving the proposal for such a thematic fund to be established. But he also talked about U.S. investments in some of the islands of the Eastern Caribbean where uh, there is significant uh, deposits of uh, thermal energy. Yes, how, how would that uh, work for or against what you are proposing? I, I don't think it is uh, in contradiction. They will work harmoniously. Um, he did speak a lot of private sector funding, and that too will uh, help the, the fund that we are speaking of. Private sector investment is very vital. He did make the point if we had a billion dollars to give everyone, fine, everyone will walk away happy. But that is not how it works, and so private sector funding should be utilized. In my contribution, I, I talked about trying to be able to move in the direction of the P3 model, which is public private um, sector participation or partnerships. Um, in Eastern Caribbean, they have thermal, but all of us have sun. And solar energy is another very vital link. Um, at that meeting also, the European Union and others spoke about the Caribbean could become a model, an example for others to follow um, with renewable, en renewable energy, alternative energy, and let us uh, um, remember that Trinidad and Tobago had suggested an amendment to the joint statement to include natural gas. So we were looking at these three areas, renewable, alternative, and natural gas. We are natural gas based. So we will always, uh, Trinidad and Tobago will always have a role, and that it is vital that we, we remain a leader in the region, and of course, uh, be uh, recognized on the international scale. And therefore, the proposal for the fund comes out of all of these. Gideon, you may want to recall also, there's a saying that when the pond rises, all, all the boats on the water, they all rise, and that is very important in the Caribbean. We are very interdependent, the Caricom nations are, in terms of trade. Trinidad and Tobago benefits tremendously 
from our trading with the other nations, our manufacturing sector, our services sector, and so on. And therefore, it is vital that they survive. Their survival also means our survival. So it's a symbiotic relationship that is there. And we are very um, interested in partnering with respect to the fund, the investment fund, um, the details of which are yet to be worked out. I, I, as I said, this said we can be a, a model, um, the Caribbean, for, for, for this thrust. And it's an, it's an international um, dimension to climate change issues. And I did say to them, um, Mr. Dugran, I said, I can see why you think we can be um, a model, because it may be easier for us to move into alternative uh, energy and renewable energy, because we have the sun every day. Um, in nations such as uh, where we were in Washington and in, uh, in London and uh, in New York, you saw what was happening with the storms. There is no way they can make any quick change or any um, radical changes to energy supplies because you're going to freeze instantly. We are lucky that we can survive without needing that added energy just to keep warm, to stay alive. So there is great hope. We have sun, we have sea, we have wind, we have thermal in um, some of the islands, and of course water, always water energy. Um, so I, I was very gratified um, that President Biden did indicate. We had spoken somewhere on Mindy, and I think in his statement later on, he talked about a thematic fund and the mechanisms and the details of which are still to be worked out. He indicated that he accepted the World Bank's, um, that he supported the World Bank's uh, uh, model that they were proposing and it was it is for the rest of us to look at it and see if we would be satisfied with that. But I think uh, on, in principle uh, we are on the same page with the thinking coming from US Vice President Biden and I see great things coming out of that initiative. He also raised some red flags about corruption in the region, saying that the U.S. has its eyes open on what happens in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure the U.S. has its eyes open also in respect of what happens in the United States uh, as well as in the region. We are uh, very fortunate in that we have finally in Trinidad and Tobago um, passed our procurement legislation which would go a long way to dealing with issues of allegations of corruption and or corruption per se in the entire procurement um, processes in, in Trinidad and Tobago and with respect to disposal even of uh, uh, public property. So I think we are a step ahead of many, many countries and for us of course that is historic legislation. So um, there was a very important point I think that Vice President Biden made when we sat around the table. When we had met, in, in fact, our first meeting had to do with follow-ups from the meeting held in Port of Spain, the issues that were raised in Port of Spain when Vice President was there with the Caracol. And one of the areas concerned uh, the fact that Trinidad and Tobago, Bahamas and Barbados, we have been graduated out of the World Bank lending facilities and funding facilities because they, it is believed that our income levels are too high. And we had raised that because we're saying, whilst you have this per capita income measure really on the ground and ordinary, ordinary life for many citizens uh, still uh, pose severe challenges. And as I say, I was very gratified in his comments when he said that the Treasury, US Treasury, was prepared to review their position with respect to that. When I made my contribution after his, um, his I said, you, you're indicating that you're prepared to review it, but what is the time frame and when? And he then stated, it is not that it is to be reviewed. He said the decision is already taken. So that our, our um, interactions now with the World Bank proposal and so on is, um, is more acceptable, given the fact that we too can benefit from any uh, funding arrangements that would be put in place. The Bahamas and, and Barbies, of course, were also very happy with that outcome. Uh, we spoke about um, follow-up with respect to uh, citizen security, and again, we intend to have a further collaboration and cooperation with uh, a citizen security for a more um, concerted effort in the fight against crime. Those were some of the good areas, but I, on the whole, it was a very productive and excellent meeting. Uh, we welcomed and thanked the uh, U.S. Vice President, of course, and the Obama administration for having us all together in, in this way. But in my contribution, I also um, 
you know, I also acknowledged uh, and expressed uh, our gratitude that in four areas they had, in fact, acceded to requests that we had made or had given consideration to suggestions we had made in Port of Spain. One, of course, is oft repeated, which is, has to do with the, the Cuba, the Cuba issue. And so whilst we are very happy to see the um, thawing of relations there and the diplomatic um, re-engagement of diplomatic relations, yes, I would say to do yes, we're very happy. Today in my contribution, I intend to go further by saying that we need to end the economic embargo. So yes, diplomatic relations, but we need to, it needs to go further. A second area that um, came out of our meetings out of Port of Spain uh, was with respect to the issue of deportees. And again, since the security deportees, um, the vice president indicated that they have put in place and will be having completed for download to, to our countries an electronic um, system, data system, with respect to deportees. Our concern when we had met in Port of Spain was that uh, we don't know who, when, why, where. And they brought at the last moment, we have notice of deportees coming in. Uh, could severely impact our own services in Trinidad and Tobago. So he indicated, again, we are very happy about that, that the electronic data um, will be shared with us, initially with six countries, um, and I do believe Trinidad and Tobago will be included in those six, and thereafter with the others. So Cuba, respect to deportees, and also he mentioned, and we were happy about that as well, that about 3.5 million persons from our diaspora would benefit from their new immigration policy. So we had some good um, feedback, and uh, it shows even though the meeting in Port of Spain was in, uh, what was it, 2013, back now in 2015, many of the issues have been addressed, and we trust that some of those issues raised yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? Time goes so fast, I think it was yesterday, that some of those issues will also be addressed as we progress. We recommitted our friendship to the United States, and for us working together in partnership for the benefit of our people in our country, the benefit of their people in their country, and for the region and the hemisphere as a whole. Perhaps I could ask the Foreign Minister for a comment. You've uh, been talking philosophically about uh, this new convergence model and perhaps the turbulence in oil prices. Now give credence to what you've been saying. Uh, for some time now, and also to comment very quickly on the Cuba issue. Well, I think the Prime Minister explained how a new platform is being set to deal with some of the very fundamental structural issues facing the region, one of which, of course, is energy. Um, in addition to that, the major issues of risk facing the Caribbean region with respect to climate change. And you're right, what that does is to give a prelude now to a larger view of the Caribbean region and the convergence. Convergence is a word I'm hearing often here at this meeting as well. So I think it's very consistent and the foundation has been set for that. Cuba? Well, it, it is a major step. It's a major diplomatic um, success story for the Caribbean region and we have always supported that position and we believe that the relationship will change the dynamics of the conduct of international relations in the Caribbean and in the world. If, if, if I may, just one further issue which was brought to my attention today that the IMF on their visit to Trinidad and Tobago has in fact um, express their support, if that is a word, but uh, that uh, with respect to our rebudgeting, the, the measures we've taken, uh, uh, the provisions for the budget of uh, downgrading of our expected revenue and prices, and, and I think that is a, a, a good indication that we are on the right pathway. Of course, we always knew we were, but it is gratifying to be validated by uh, an outside agency, an independent agency. I'm sure that will be making the news sometime today. The statement put out by the IMF was, uh, was um, shared with me a short while ago um, via the electronic media. So I think that will be an item also making the news. And I, I want to say that that gives us a greater validation and support in which respect the path we have chosen. 
given the turbulence in the energy sector and the turbulence in the global markets with our main revenue earner, oil and gas.